Debbie, I'm, I'm a long-term follower of yours on Twitter, and uh, I must, it's been very refreshing, you know, over the last, you know, during the pandemic especially, I think your your tweets have been refreshingly candid in in some respects. Um, and I, I wanted to ask you, you know, must be must be very difficult as a as a parent as well going through this having to um you know juggle the professional life and the non in in one kind of place and i just you know I, i'm sure a lot of people are going through something similar right now and um i don't what would you how how has that been how, you know how what advice would you give to people working in the industry who are sort of you know feeling quite claustrophobic at the moment and look i think last year I think all of us went into last year, you know, typical British spirit to a degree in the trenches. We can do this. Let's come together. Let's fight through this. All of us with one eye on the fact that we're not going to have to deal with this after the end of the year. Right. So everybody was in that f- wave of digging down, going through. I actually think the biggest challenges for any employer and any business irrelevant of industry is actually going to be for the first half of this year with people. I think we've got much bigger issues to cope with. What I found really good um, in particular with my own team is being, you know, I'm very transparent, you know, they don't see backdrops on, my son walks into the call, that's it. See it from the top, see you as a human being, they know my challenges. You know, if I'm on call, sorry guys, I need to, I've got my son to feed or I need to do this, you know, we deal with that. Um, I think, it's probably been the biggest wake up call in terms for people like me in particular is listening to myself, listening to what my body is saying to me when I'm tired. You know, I work, I, you know, we're a global business that works all around the world with developers all over the world and partners all over the world. Um, so that means I'm often on early morning calls and I'm on late night calls, right? Um, being strict, making sure I take that break, go outside, go for a walk, being a flexible employer. Mm. Your, if your people have got children, I think in our workforce, around 10% have children. You know, um, making sure that they know it's okay to vanish for two hours in the afternoon if you want to go and do something. We know that they're gonna pick it up. You know, they're passionate about their jobs and they want to do their jobs. It's okay for that to be later or the following morning. You know, being very flexible, I think, is one of the biggest things I think has come. I, one, of the, one of the biggest benefits of COVID is I think employers all around the world now have got an incredible amount of trust in their, yeah. in their teams that work with them. And we have trust in terms of are people doing the right things? You know, they care as passionately about the success of Team 17 as what I do, you know, and I, I know that. So you have to be very flexible like that. But also, you've got to learn to switch off. I'm telling you all the things I don't necessarily listen to myself, you know, as an individual. But you have to, you know, my weekends, you know, it takes a lot to make me do things on a weekend. That's time with my son. But it's been a hard balance. It's been, you know, I... I have a whole new amount of respect for school teachers. You know, I call homeschooling is payback for everything that I ever did wrong in my teenage years. That's the way I sum it up. I completely agree with you. I mean, uh, let's hope that the good things, if there is some good stuff to come out of COVID, it is that people respect what the National Health Service do. They respect what the teaching profession do. They respect what people delivering food to their house and goods and those do. I, you know, it would be nice for, for there to be more empathy. I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that we've all learned a lot.